So the essential process is coaches will upload videos and our scoring team will break them down for you. And then you can add some other details as well, which we'll show you in a little bit. So all the stat views are customizable. If you want to look at just offense, for example, look like this. Again, it, we've got 24 games, so it takes a little while to crunch it. Like so, so these are offensive stats. You can easily sort. So I want to see who's my most effective field goal percentage people. So Leo's at 50, Joe's at 49, Austin's at 48, et cetera. Some of the cool things you can do with this that you can't do with other programs is you can segment on certain part of the game. So if we want to see who starts out hot, we can take the first six minutes of every game. It'll recalculate just the first stats for the first six minutes and how people are doing. In the first six minutes, Vaughn actually does really well. Leo, Mark, et cetera, as far as the field goal percentage. And you can also do things on a per, per 32 or per 40 minute basis if you like as you go. So lots of ways to slice and dice that. We can also look at our three point shots and let's say we want to look just for corner shots, left corner. So you can isolate on a particular area of the floor and say, okay, here's all of our left corner shots. And these are the ones the opponents took. So they were 21%. We're actually 21% too. But we can look at our players and say, oh, so Noah's one for 10. Vaughn's one for four. Olin, who's our, our best three-point shooter, 19th, he actually shoots 30% overall. And we can, if you want to look at just like both corners, we can set up like so. Olin's a little bit better on both corners, et cetera. If you want to look at the videos of just, let's say, Olin in the corner, then we can see video of just Olin's corner threes, both the makes and the misses. I'm going to admit, John. So these are, these are Olin's corner threes. Like, so the chart, chart's really fun. And another way we can use this is if we're determining if a no middle defense is going to work for you. So we can like look at our opponents, for example. And so these are all of our opponent's shots. And let's just isolate on everything from slot to slot. Inside the slot, the opponents are 44%. You can exclude. And they're 26% outside the center of the floor. So if you guys are looking for a good analytical reason to back up going to a no middle defense, this is one way to do this. Again, it's personnel dependent. Yeah, some teams like to force left, but I find this is a pretty valuable way of gaining insight onto what shots you want to allow and what shots you want to prevent. Um, you can also assign a quality score to your shots. So we've done this with some of our games and basically show how, rate them from quality one to 10, and you can see who's taking good shots and who's taking not good shots. So Leo's average quality score is 5.3, so he has pretty good shot selection. Average on the team is 4.6. You know, Olin, because he takes a lot of runners, I think that brings his shot quality down like was with Kai. And again, they can see how they do in the different quality zones. Obviously, ones, twos, and threes aren't going to go in very often. Tens, which are like a breakaway layup, or nines should be a lot better. So again, that's really helpful as far as uh, the shot collection, selection goes. And then rebounding, we're actually tracking rebounds. This year, the rebound locations, so you can see where everything is. And you can see the different percentages. We like to encourage our kids to go crash the boards, especially on three-pointers. So we're getting 40% of our three-point rebounds. It's pretty good. Other teams aren't quite as good, probably more than I'd like to see. But again, it's really helpful to see how that goes. And if you're tracking rebound locations, you can also tie them to the shot chart. For example, we can take our left threes and let's show the rebounds from here. Typically, rebounds go opposite. It's a good illustration for... Kids, if they want to become elite rebounders, just to show where these things go, you can see the play-by-play -play of what occurred during that run. You can see this group was in for most of it, and this group subbed in. So if there's a particular lineup that was having trouble, you can see that in the particular run. And then the other really thing that neat thing that I love is the timelines. So for every player and for the team, you can get a good picture of what happened while they were playing. So defaults to shooting. So the green dots are makes, red dots are misses, big dots are threes, little dots are twos. So we can see Olin start off really hot, and then he didn't get as many threes towards the end. Leo came on in the second half. I should say the shaded parts are when a player played, white parts are when they sat out. So you get a good idea of how your rotations have worked and that sort of thing. So we'll go back into this college game that we did, and Bill mentioned action tags. So for this team, what's really important to them is paint touches. So they wanted to track how many times the ball touched the paint and what happened after that happened. So there's a scoring efficiency for any of these actions. So if we went like that, and now we'd find out that every time 
Jacob Gibbs got into the paint, which was two times, the team scored 0.5 points. Okay. For all 15 times that the ball touched the paint, they scored 1.4 points per basket, which is, as we know, a lot. That informs the coaches who are trying to stress paint touches, get the ball into the paint, draw the defense, and kick to the open three or try to finish at the rim. So you can look at it by uh, possession. And you can look at it by sequence, which is there could be multiple sequences within a possession, including like offensive rebounds. And then you can look at what happened immediately after there was a paint touch. So in this case, it was 1.31, 1.13 uh, points per possession. Anytime there's a, a turnover or a foul, the system automatically stops. But you could also go into this and then make a, a clip or a comment, which I'll show you here in a second how useful that is. So you just go to the event, you click on the event, here's the turnout out of bounds, and then you make it a clip. And you say, okay, keep your head up on the drive. Okay, we have an emoticon here. That's a thought, right? That's for Frankie. That's on offense. And we can add that to our clips. And now I'm done with the game. And I look at the clips and comments. And there it is. There's the clip right there. Keep your head up on the drive. Uh, that one was about Frankie. So if Frankie and you wanted to have a film session, then you could pull up the clips just about Frankie and have a little film session with them. So, so the coaching stats are a really nice way to get an idea of how different things are going. Likewise, your set offense, if you run certain plays, we ran a few things. Sometimes they would just free flow it, but when we actually ran stuff, they did better. This is a split action. We didn't run it that often, but it did good. But again, you can measure all your plays and sets and actions and see how they go. Likewise, a transition from, from rebounds, from turnovers, a little bit of secondary break, 